Hey everybody, it's Steph here. So, sorry I haven't been doing blogs for the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, I've been really busy. It's a lot of schools, new schools, deploying to Studio Web. When you got new schools, you always got little issues here and there with uh, firewall issues and other things like that. It's just normal with the deployment of uh, any new app in any new environment. So that's been taking up a lot of my time. Also, I uh, had a bit of an accident. I was uh, I was on my hanging tree, you know my hanging tree, and when you're hanging off the hanging tree, at least for me, it pinches my neck sometimes, and then I have to uh, really work on my breathing, and I didn't do it enough, and I actually fainted out of the tree, it fell right out of the tree, and fortunately, as I was hitting the ground, I regained consciousness, but right beside the tree, right behind me, was this big, tall uh, obulus, right, this big, tall cement thing, marble thing, hit the back of my head, but surprisingly, just a light touch, my hat flew off, but, you know, no big deal, nothing really happened to me, uh, I was a little, f uh, well, nothing really happened to me, I was I messed up my back for a day, but I'm okay. Anyhow, so in this video, we're going to talk about proper naming conventions in your files, proper naming conventions. Now, I've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but let's get straight to the point. There's a few things that you should got to consider. Uh, number one, you should have a consistency in your naming. So when you first start working on any project, any coding project, you should first look at and decide upon rather what your naming convention is going to be. So that means, are you going to use camel case? Are you going to use dashes between your uh, words and your variable function class names? Are you going to use underscores? You have to sort of come up with your protocol with your naming scheme and stick to it. This may seem like a small little issue, but trust me, when you're doing more and more, uh, writing more and more code, having a very consistent naming structure is just going to make your code easier to manage and, and write. Another thing you, that you should do is that when you, once you've decided what your naming structure is going to be, make sure that it's consistent on all levels of the app. So in your object level, uh, when you're writing your actual code, whether it be your PHP, your Ruby, your JavaScript, whatever, just make sure that uh, you uh, carry, you're consistent with this, but also in your database. So most of the time you're doing apps, you're going to be using uh, databases. So make sure that your database uh, field names, table names, and so forth, utilize and adhere to the same naming convention. Again, you'll see when you start writing your SQL code and you start interacting with your object layer and your database layer, it's just going to make it a little bit easier. And what happens if you have a consi consistent naming convention, it, you, it, just, it just, everything moves much more smoothly. The next tip is that you should use verbose name verbose names in your code verbose names so have variable names that are self-describing i've talked about self-describing code but let me give you a quick uh a quick concrete example so let's say you are uh you've got an app where people are logging in so you have um, users that are uh, logging in uh, who could be uh, students and another user type that could be a teacher so what i would do is i would have user teacher, password with underscores in between, dashes in between, or camel case in between the words. So, uh, and that would be consistent. So if you have another user type of student, you would have user, uh, student, password. Very self-describing. And then when you have functions or methods that do something, then I would have very explicit, long-winded, verbose function names. So it might be get student password, get teacher password that kind of thing the less you have to have comments in your code and the more verbose your code is variable names function names method names well methods functions etc 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 class names the easier your code is going to be uh, is going to be to uh, maintain final tip I like to go from the macro to the micro from the general to the specific with regards to uh, variable names, function names, and so forth. So what do I mean by that? So let's say I had two user types. I wanted to interact with teacher and student. W would you name your variables uh, teacher user and student user? Or would you name it user student, user teacher, or even better yet, user type 
student, user, type, teacher. Of course, I would use that last one because I go from the very general to the specific. The very general is the user, and the very specific is teacher. And that, you know, think about that. If you put that in terms rather in object-oriented programming, it would be you start with your, when you're naming your variables, your function names, your method names, your database tables, whatnot. Think of it as starting always with your base class. So your base class, in this case, would be the user class, and the subclass of the base of user would be, of course, uh, in the case of student, would be student. In the case of teacher, would be teacher. So there you go. Those are my little variable tips. It's going to go a long way in helping you uh, have much cleaner code. Verbose names, self-describing names, uh, have a, a code base that doesn't require hardly any comments. If you find you're writing a lot of comments, that means you have overly complex code and you don't have good self-describing code. So keep that in mind. We'll talk soon. Ciao.